What happened? Do not be alarmed. I am here in the darkness. It is better that I remain concealed. You do not understand my appearance. Who are you? I demand you state your business here. Your demands mean nothing to me. It has been decided, however, that I will speak to those of you who have expressed words and thoughts of understanding. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. You're watching PNT. I'm your host, apprehensively watching the downfall of Western civilization. Up front this week, according to an article by the Huffington Post and numerous online sources, military troops claim they have captured evidence of the elusive Yeti. Soldiers of the Indian Army Mountaineering Expedition team posted a series of photos to Twitter that appear to show a series of large footprints in the snow near the team's base camp. Taken on April 9th near Mount Makalu, the photos are a recent entry in a chain of anecdotal and unverified evidence of the mythological creature, with the first photographs of the enormous footprints taken by the Smythe Expedition in 1937. Other purported evidence of the abominable snowman includes numerous photos similar to the Indian Army captures, examples of hair, and even a yeti scalp. The existence of the creature has always been as hotly debated as the existence of its Northern American cousin, known as Bigfoot. As a result, experts have been extremely skeptical of the soldiers' find, stating that the likeliest cause of the footprints seen in the photos were not those of a snowy Sasquatch, but a bear, which had then melted in the high-altitude sun. Despite the ridicule that they have endured online, the soldiers of the Indian Army have remained steadfast in their story, pointing to the legends of the snowman that have been recounted by local Tibetans for centuries. For PNT's part, while we admit that the existence of the creature is still very much up for debate, we have to admire the leader of the soldiers for sticking by his men, and that despite all of the mockery of the skeptics, yet he persisted. From Twitter in Tibet to ironic investigations, our next story in our weekly roundup of the weird takes us to Washington where one branch of the military seems to be about to revive a decades-long dormant program investigating UFOs. According to an article by LiveScience.com, the U.S. Navy plans to implement a new official reporting and investigative branch to collect data on UFOs seen by Navy pilots. Ostensibly, the goal of the program is to remove the stigma associated with reporting a UFO sighting, which has long been strongly discouraged for both civilian and military pilots. UFO researchers should not get their hopes up, however, as the Navy is not planning to release any of the information to the public, citing national security concerns which are not focused on alien invaders, but rather the identification of hostile craft from foreign countries. Ufologists were some surprised at the Navy's unwillingness to share the data given the long history of military suppression of the UFO phenomena. While this might seem like yet another attempt by the US government to hide pertinent data, not all seem to suspect dark motivations behind the new program. Seth Shostak, senior astronomer at the SETI Institute, believes that the Navy is actually helping to bring credibility to the issue by formally investigating reported sightings, helping to encourage transparency between officials and the skeptical public, as well as identify common causes for sightings. For PNT's part, while we must wonder about the true motives behind the Navy's new program, we also must point out that at least government officials finally seem to be willing to examine the evidence at hand and, through rational processes, determine those sightings that truly are unknown. Rather like what PNT has been doing all along. We'll be back with the final part of our program in just a few minutes. But first, a word from our sponsors. 
Ipana presents Bucky Beaver Space Guard. Brush a brush a brush -a. Here's the new Ipana with the brand new flavor. It's dandy for your teeth. It's the K-Germ, and he's headed this way. <laughs> I'm gonna make cavities in everybody's teeth. Beaver, I'm gonna blast holes in your teeth. Hi, Pana! <coughs> New Eye Pana knocks out decay germs best of all eating brands, including fluoride toothpaste. Brush up, brush up, brush up. Here's the new Eye Pana with the brand new flavor. Knocks out DK germs best. Fresh, clean, and minty. You'll like it. New Eye Pana toothpaste. Welcome back. And remember, brusha, brusha, brusha. For the final part of our weekly roundup of the weird, PNT is pleased to bring you a strange UFO report drawn from the MUFON database. Recorded on April 24th, the video appears to show a large, saucer shaped object moving slowly in the skies over Palm Springs, California. Let's have a look at the footage.
So what was the saucer-shaped object captured on tape last month, moving slowly through the skies over Palm Springs? Let's run down the possibilities. First, let's get rid of the obvious. It's not a bird, meteor, flare, known drone, or fixed-wing aircraft, either civilian or military. So, what about a balloon, especially the eponymous weather balloon? While this could be a viable explanation for what we're seeing, there are several problems with this theory. Balloons, even party balloons, do not have a rigid structure to keep its form and stability when subjected to strong wind currents such as those found near ground level altitudes. The object in the video appears to maintain a solid shape as it moves at a leisurely pace across the skies and shows no signs of deformation. So, a balloon seems to be out. However, balloons do have much larger cousins that do have a rigid frame, dirigibles, also known as blimps. Following up on this possibility, PNT examined the footage carefully for the telltale evidence of a blimp, rear fins, and a gondola underneath the craft. As can be seen in our analysis, we found no evidence of these structures present on the object in the video. Clearly, it does not match the standard configuration or size for a standard blimp. While this would seem to eliminate this possibility, we're not quite done with this explanation just yet. As we've covered in previous episodes, there are large rigid frame aircraft currently in development that do not match the standard blimp silhouette. Prototype lifting bodies such as the Airlander 10 and Lockheed Martin Hybrid. These craft, while similar in principle to your basic blimp, present a far different profile with the gondola or cabin tucked between the two enormous air bladders. This gives a much sleeker profile and decreases wind resistance on the airship. There are still common features to be found, with both blimps and airships relying on propellers for thrust and fins for stability and steering. The difference lies in size and number. Airships use multiple and much smaller engines, again decreasing drag and streamlining the profile of the craft and much smaller control surfaces spread over the surface. The slow speed that an airship maintains also matches that of the craft seen in the video, giving us an almost perfect identification. PNT could have stopped here. Case closed. Explanation found. But we like to be a little more thorough than that. To confirm our theory, we searched event calendars for the month of April throughout the Palm Springs, Coachella Valley area. We reasoned that if there were an airship that large in the area, it was likely there in connection with some larger event. Our suspicions proved to be correct. The Coachella Valley is the yearly home to both the Coachella Valley Music and Arts Festival and the Stagecoach Music Festival, both very large events that were in the area during the latter part of April. Either of these events logically could have included the presence of a large airship. There was one problem, however. The dates of the festivals and the date of the incident do not match. With the witness recording the event on April the 24th, and the festivals occurring just before and just after the date in question. While this is a discrepancy, it is still very likely that an airship could have been used days before to advertise the Stagecoach Music Festival on April 26th. So, while not an exact date match to the footage, it's still well within the realm of possibility. Further chasing this lead, PNT then attempted to determine if there had been an airlander-type craft in the vicinity at the time in question. Curiously, we found no large airships of the airlander variety scheduled to be flying in the area on those dates. We did, however, find a blimp that was. Following up on a lead posted in an online forum, we discovered that the It's a 10 Hair Care Company, as part of an advertising campaign, was flying a large white blimp in the Coachella Valley region of California from April 10th to May 5th, and it was in the area of Palm Springs on exactly the date in question. 
But this discovery also leads to another problem. With the It's a 10 campaign using a smaller standard advertising blimp, the profile and size does not match the object recorded by the witness, leaving us, once again, with more questions than answers. So, could the footage be a hoax? If it is, it's a good one. P&T's analysis of the footage found no indication of the use of CGI overlays or other signs of manipulation. So, with the logical explanations covered, we turn again to the boundless possibilities of the unknown. Is it possible that what the witness captured on tape was in fact an otherworldly craft? That it was, in fact, exactly what it looks like? A large white flying saucer moving slowly over the desert. Curiously, there is a basis for this possibility. For Palm Springs, is no stranger to UFOs. There have long been rumors of contact between the United States government and various alien species, but one of the strangest and most compelling is the alleged 1954 meeting between President Eisenhower and representatives of an alien species known as the Nordics, due to their pale complexions, white hair, and blue eyes. The Nordics communicated telepathically and offered the President a deal at Holloman Air Force Base. Their technology and spiritual wisdom in return for the destruction of America's nuclear weapons. Rebuffing the Nordics offered, Ike apparently met later with a race known as the Greys, who were less interested in planetary peace and harmony than in exploitation. Similar to the Nordics offer, the Greys were willing to advance our technology tenfold, for a price. It wasn't nuclear disarmament that was on their minds, but rather experimentation on the human race. According to accounts, Eisenhower agreed to the Greys' terms. In return for their technology, they could abduct and experiment on the bovine and human populations of Earth, with the cabot that any humans be returned safely to their home afterwards. What was not mentioned was the condition these unwilling lab rats would be in upon their return. The cattle were disposable, and it may very well be no coincidence that the first reports of cattle mutilations began to appear soon after. Certainly a dark and fascinating story, but does it have any truth to it? In this case, the facts are a bit muddled and extremely curious. We know from public record that President Eisenhower was on a golf vacation at the Smoking Tree Ranch in Palm Springs, California on February 20th, 1954. We know that after dinner that night, the President made an abrupt and unscheduled departure from the ranch. At that point, the President of the United States of America fell off the map for nearly 24 hours. But it gets stranger. That same night, the Associated Press put a report of Eisenhower's death from a heart attack out on the press wire. Less than two minutes later, they retracted the story, reporting that Ike was, in fact, still very much alive. His whereabouts until the next morning when the president attended church in Los Angeles remain a mystery. The official explanation, according to a press release, was that the president had chipped a tooth eating dinner and had gone to see a dentist. Whether or not President Eisenhower went to the dentist in the middle of the night, only to end up in church nearly a hundred miles away the next morning, or met with the ambassador of an alien species, will always remain a tantalizing mystery. But. Whether or not the mysterious white craft filmed moving slowly over Palm Springs last April was a hoax, a blimp advertising free hair care product, or something else entirely, we'll leave up to you to decide. Sound off in the comments section below with your thoughts. That's it for this time, faithful viewers. Be sure to click like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to be notified when PNT presents your next portion of the paranormal. I'm your host, reminding you to keep an open mind. 
because a closed one shuts up truth.